we thought there were so many, or a number, of issues that were of such great importance that they warranted revisiting. And so we've gained a year, and we think the product that's going to the membership in May is superior to the project that's even been approved. First of all, it, it, uh, the whole area of investor state arbitration, we early determined uh, needed a separate chapter, uh, which was, I think, for us a, a watershed event uh, organizationally in terms of subject matter. But uh, at the core of it is the distinctive nature of the exit convention, uh, characterized, among other things, by a relative um, lack of involvement of our courts, our courts generally. It's the nature of the exit convention to set up a highly comprehensive, ad hoc, uh, a national kind of regime. And courts have limited, limited involvement by design in the convention. So we try to spell that out um, to the extent the exit convention applies, while also uh, demonstrating that uh, the rest of the basic principles that we set forth elsewhere in the convention apply to non-exit investor state cases. And so uh, that's the structure of chapter five. The idea of the ICSID convention, unlike the non-ICSID investor state awards or arbitrations, is um, the term of art usually is self-contained. So, as Jack said, uh, you, if you want to contest an ICSID award, you need to do it within ICSID. ICSID has its own annulment layer, and it created that layer precisely because you cannot go to a court to contest an ICSID award. So in order to correct error, in order to, to check abuses of any kind, ICSID had to acknowledge and um, create, in effect, an appellate mechanism. One of the things we reflected on is when we first started. And when we first started, we actually had no idea um, that we would need definitions. We sat down, we made a nice outline of all the substantive issues that we thought we needed. But as we started trying to write anything, we realized we couldn't get very far um, without locking out definitions of categories that ended up informing the larger architecture of the entire project. Uh, but we have a lot of definitions, but they're really important for understanding uh, and for making the black letter more simple and linear, rather than bundling up a lot of uh, dependent clauses or other If you don't define, you might get undue clutter yes, exactly. in the black letter itself. And it's more important to have uncluttered black letter. Mm -hmm. and it's worth having lengthy definitions. But they also do a lot of heavy lifting. I mean, one of the things when I teach international arbitration now is I actually put up the definitions and they bring a lot of clarity to students about, about issues you didn't necessarily know are, are uncertain in their minds. So the definitions end up being a, a little bit unsung heroes of the restatement. And that's our co-reporter Jack who took the laboring oar on most of those. So a uh, shout out to Jack. It's an international subject, but every country in the world has its view of international law. So that's why it's got the unusual title of the U.S. Law of International Commercial Arbitration. Uh, the, the focus of the restatement is the role, as most restatements, is informing courts and counsel um, with, with the assumption that there might be a case or a counseling of a client about a case that might make its way into the U.S. courts. So it's really the intersection between the arbitral mm -hmm. process and the U.S. judiciary, state and federal. That is the, the core of the restatement. And I would just add that there are, there are three moments in the life cycle of an arbitration where courts are called upon to do one thing or another. To enforce an agreement to arbitrate if a party is resist resisting arbitration, which is not uncommon. Uh, then we have, while the arbitration is proceeding, there are moments at which a court may be called upon, perhaps to provide interim relief, or perhaps to provide, see to it that documents are provided. And then when the arbitration is concluded, well, unless the award is paid, then there's going to be a proceeding. Um, and of course, in any event, the award can be challenged. So we have very, very important judicial activity after the arbitration is over.